you have to come back for a few more rounds. But when you do encounter the, the Sat Guru, the Sat Guru begins to eat your karma and also bring you back to the light, bring you back home to the truth of who you are. And it, be, it begins to illuminate and burns out your illusion that you are your thoughts, the illusion that you are your body, you are your emotions, your illusion that you are your money, you are your financial status, the illusion that you are your greed or anger or jealousy, all these things are slowly being burned and removed. And you're being invited to come home, back to love, back into your true nature. So what happened was as a result of that, Rumi gave up his practice. He gave up his students. And he gave, he offered because he realized that finally he met the Sat Guru. So, and he wanted to be, he realized like, I want to be with my Sat Guru every moment of my life because this is it. This is the way back to full awakening and coming home. So Rumi started to provide because he was wealthy and he wanted to give everything he had to Shams, but Shams didn't care. He didn't want Rumi's stuff to him. It didn't really matter, but Rumi started to provide for, for Shams and create things so Shams is not living in poverty. And Rumi dedicated his life to his sad guru from then on. So the story goes on and Rumi's followers and family, they get very annoyed and they get paranoid and very jealous of the fact that Rumi became 100% dedicated and devoted to his sat guru, to Shams. And of course, they did not understand the relationship because when you're outside and you haven't been touched by the power of the guru, you haven't been touched by the presence of love, by the presence of an awakened being. And you're, so you're judging him from their looks. You're judging him from their status in society. And of course they were judging Shams, Rumi's sad guru, because, you know, it was kind of a raggedy old man and he didn't look wealthy, he wasn't wearing the Brahmin's clothing, he didn't have any land, he didn't have any sheep, he didn't have any property, stuff like that. So they were judging him, but they didn't know who he was because Shams did not show himself to those people. He only showed himself to Rumi. And that's normally what happens, that your relationship with your guru, your sat guru, the teacher, is your direct experience and connection with the teacher. 
You may bring your friends and say, oh my God, check him out, check him out. He's amazing, she's amazing. And they may come and sit with you and meditate, but they don't feel anything. To them it's like, okay, this guy, this, this teacher, this woman, she, she's nice, she's nice, but they don't feel anything. But then your connection is different. You are just going into these places of divine oneness and complete ecstasy, but they don't feel it. So what happened was the disciples plotted an assassination. And uh, of course, Shams knew that. Shams already knew that Rumi's disciples are going to assassinate him and kill him. He knew that. And uh, he allowed it. He did not interfere with that. So Rumi's disciples, they kidnap Shams, they kill Shams. And uh, of course, Rumi finds out and he goes into a very deep sadness and mourning. And, and for one year, he didn't speak to anybody and he was mourning the loss of his sat guru. And from there on, Rumi began to write these verses, this poetry. So I believe he's written about 164,000 verses of poetry in his love affair and devotion to Shams. Writing, writing, writing of his love affair with his sat guru, of his devotion. And, but you have to understand when you're reading Rumi's poetry and whatever he's saying, now that you have this understanding of his background, he's not writing this love, a devoted poetry to an object. It's not to a person, he's writing it to God because he saw God in Shams, that was manifestation of her majesty, the supreme being. So this is his love affair with the supreme. The sat guru is the supreme because she or he is the one who liberated you. You received your liberation through your sat guru. So naturally you're gonna feel this obligation is a natural obligation. This is this respect, this connection that you're going to, this devotion that you're going to feel towards your sat guru forever. The sat guru is not requiring it. Like Papaji remained devoted to Ramana Maharishi all of his life. Every time we had satsang in India. There was always a big picture of Ramana Maharshi. Papaji always came and postured to Ramana Maharshi. And that's how it's been my feeling towards my Sadhguru. It's like this very deep love for him always, because he was the one who led me to liberation because of him. So naturally you have this deep love for them.